Welcome to BizJet TV. My name is Fabrizio Sapoli. Today we're going to be talking about pilot fatigue and how to avoid pilot fatigue on your private jet. Now, the uh, reason I'm doing this video is because just recently uh, Qatar Airways pilots have filed a complaint uh, saying that they are very fatigued. Um, this is happening across the world. It's not just happening over in Qatar Airways. It's happening also in the private jet world. Um, I've been talking to a number of pilots just over the last few weeks and they're complaining. They, they fly for these, one of these large charter operators that's got you know hundreds of jets flying around the world and they're constantly on the go you know, from one country to the other across time zones and over like a 22, 23 day shift, you know, they're just flying around the world continuously and then they only have two or three days rest and they're back in the air again. So this is very, very dangerous. But we're just going to look at an initial clip uh, um, about this and, uh, and then we'll come back and I'll show you some research that's just been done just a few years ago about pilot fatigue and then we'll go into what you can do to avoid this happening on your private jet. Off we go. Leveling off during the transition to an ILS approach late at night, a pilot forgets to increase the power and allows the airspeed of the aircraft to drop. A stall warning sounds. The pilot quickly takes control but his corrective action leads to an overspeed and further corrective action almost leads to a second stall warning. Thankfully, the pilot regains control and the aircraft lands safely. When investigating this incident, it is concluded that SOPs were not followed, monitoring was ineffective, and crew coordination during recovery was poor. Crew alertness and performance may have been affected by fatigue, a state of reduced alertness or mental performance that can impair one's ability to safely operate an aircraft or perform safety-related duties, such as monitoring threats and preventing hazards. It's often the result of sleep deficit or interruption of the normal sleep pattern, or mental fatigue from high concentration, a likely occurrence for pilots and air traffic controllers since they frequently work at night or early in the morning. In addition, transit across time zones can disrupt circadian rhythms, and that may make it difficult for flight crew operating long-haul routes through multiple time zones to get enough quality rest before they start work. Fatigue usually leads to impaired standards of operation and increased likelihood of omissions, errors, and failure to follow procedure. It can mean longer reaction times, reduced attentiveness, impaired memory, or a withdrawn mood. For pilots, fatigue can lead to inaccurate flying, missed radio calls, relevant system status messages going unnoticed, routine tasks being performed incorrectly or even forgotten, and in extreme cases, even to pilots falling asleep, for a short micro-sleep or for a longer period. In addition, it can affect both pilots at the same time. For controllers, fatigue can lead to poor decision-making, slower reaction speed to changing situations, impending conflictions going unnoticed, loss of situational awareness and forgetfulness. That's why organizations must manage shifts and rest periods to allow for enough quality rest. Furthermore, both pilots and controllers should be professional and adopt suitable strategies to avoid fatigue and be rested and fit when they come to work. They should not be shy or afraid to admit they are fatigued and always inform their colleagues if they do not feel able to work safely. Find out more about fatigue on Skybury. Now that was uh, very interesting. So now let's look at some stats that were produced as a result of a survey that was done in 2018 amongst airlines in the Middle East. Um, and they had 328 pilots in this survey. Uh, they discovered that 224 of these pilots, which is 68.3%, had a fatigue severity score of over 36, which means they're suffering uh, from severe fatigue, which is really, really dangerous. Then we had 221 pilots, which is 67.4%. Um, they... Um, admitted to making mistakes in the cockpit, and this was rep uh, reported caused by fatigue. Then 112 pilots, which is 34.1%, had an Epworth sleepiness scale over 10, which indicates excessive daytime sleepiness. And then we had 148 pilots reported falling asleep at the controls at least once without agreeing with their colleagues. And then 113 pilots had abnormal HADS, which means hospital anxiety and depression scale of over Eight, and in fact, this um, uh, pilot displayed in the, on this photo here was the one that crashed that German Wings airplane a few years ago where he was depressed and he decided he was going to kill himself and everybody else on board the airplane. Now, uh, these are all things that, that are happening. Um, I personally, as a pilot, have experienced fatigue. I've never been depressed, fortunately, but I have fallen asleep at the controls. I've been drowsy during the day. 
I've made mistakes in the flight deck because I was tired because of fatigue. That's all happened to me. And um, so what can you do to, to avoid this? And, you know, over the years, you know, um, I experimented a number of different things uh, to see what I could do to make sure that I was awake when I was flying. Uh, in fact, my wife and I wrote a book called Health for Flies, which you can see here. Um, and you can buy it on Amazon. Uh, my wife is a herbalist and a natural She's into natural healing and that. So she was, you know, finding out stuff and giving me stuff to do on the flight deck. And so, you know, as a consequence, we wrote this book. But um, the, the main thing that needs to be done here, and in particular, if you have your own private jet and you're going to be doing some flying, you have to make sure that your pilots are rested. So you don't want to do, and this is the danger with charters, is that sometimes these charter operator, operators, they just continue to have, with their pilots flying, one flight after the next. I mean, they, they land, drop off some passengers, minimum rest, take off again next morning uh, with just maybe eight hours rest and off they go again for another 12 hour flight. Um, and they keep flying. And this, you know, over time, this tiredness stacks up and, and causes fatigue. And fatigue's not something that you can cure with a, with a good night's sleep. It's something that takes uh, a few weeks to, to cure. And it's very, very dangerous because you can take the best pilot in the world, the best trained pilot in the world, and if you make them fatigued, they're going to make mistakes. And these mistakes can lead to accidents. And in fact, if you look at the accidents over the last 10 to 20 years, um, you can clearly see the trend of pilot fatigue uh, being one of the main elements in causing the accident to happen. So if you are looking into buying a private jet, which is great, you can ping me an email, we'll get you on a, a strategy call and design and find the right jet for you. But the other aspect of the deal is, you know, is finding the right pilots and making sure you hire the, the right number of pilots. Because if you're gonna be doing a lot of flying, you need to hire extra pilots. You don't want two, you maybe want three or maybe four. Um, I mean, ideally what a lot of people are doing now, is particularly if they're buying the big jets like the Goldstream G650 or Global Express or 7X, they're hiring four pilots and they do like a two or three weeks on, two to three weeks off. Um, so the guys know that, you know, they're on for two weeks, they're flying. But, you know, even when you're doing your flying, you want to make sure that, you know, in between flights, these uh, pilots get rested. It's really, really important that you, that you understand that because, you know, pilots are human beings and um, even the best and fittest pilots do get fatigued. They're, they're not supermen. Um, and so that's really, really important to bear in mind. So if you're looking to buy a private jet, you're, you're thinking of, um, you know, you need to hire pilots or anything like that. Uh, I can definitely help you. Just ping me an email and uh, we'll get you scheduled in for a Zoom call and design the right strategy around for you for your private jet acquisition. And if you haven't subscribed to Budget TV, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. Give us a thumbs up and comment below uh, what's been your experience with pilot fatigue. Let's get the conversation going. And if you haven't checked this uh, interesting interview I did recently with Don Catalano, who's a Honda jet owner, he tells you his story of how he uses his private jet to build his business and how COVID has changed the way he does that. And so this is a really interesting one. So check that one out. And that's all from Fabrizio Pauline, Bizjet TV, and I'll see you on the next one.